Hi, I'm Cheryl Kagan, very proud to be the Senator for Gaithersburg in Rockville. Welcome to this special edition of Kibitzing with Kagan, featuring another gubernatorial candidate. With me today is John Barron. John, thank you so much for joining me this afternoon. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. I have no idea what to expect. You, you didn't share any of the questions in advance, so we'll see how things go. You'll do great. I'm gonna give you a minute to start off and I will time you. Uh, tell us about your background, anything you'd like and why you're running for governor. Well, uh, let me give you the one minute version of why I'm running for governor. I've got longer versions too, here it is. Uh, start the timer. Okay, anyway, okay. Um, poverty rate and we're not solving problems. Many of, there are many longstanding problems in the state where we're not making progress. That's why I'm running. In education, more than a quarter of middle school students in Maryland cannot read at a basic competency level. More than a third can't do basic math. You know what those numbers were 20 years ago? Exactly the same. Mm. Um, you know, the poverty rate today is 9%. It was 9% in 1995. Low and moderate income Marylanders have seen stagnant wages for decades as income inequality has grown. Everybody's had a new plan to solve these problems, but we, here we are decades later, we're still mired in many of the same problems. Clearly we need a very different approach and that's what I'm offering. You've got 23 seconds left. Tell us about your background. Well, <laughs> uh, let me just say this. I'm a longtime Marylander. Um, what I would do different, my very different approach, I hope to get into it a little bit here. I know this is not policy, but it is uh, expanding programs and policies that don't just sound plausible, but have been tested and proven to improve education and other wages and other outcomes. Okay, um, thank you. Okay. Thank yes. you. So we are going to get started. I have different categories and we are gonna start with your childhood. Tell us where you grew up. I grew up in Montgomery County, uh, about two miles down the street from the house where I live now. Perfect, do you have siblings? Four siblings. Okay, where are you in birth order? Four out of five. Okay. Uh, did you have a pet when you were growing up? An occasional goldfish. Okay. <laughs> Not so high maintenance, right? No. Uh, were you a good student when you were growing up? Yes. Okay. And you're a Churchill Bulldog too, right? No, 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 no. Please. Oh. Where? Sorry. Perish the thought. No, I, um, uh, I <laughs> didn't mean to insult you. Um, I went to, and my kids went to the same, uh, elementary and middle schools, Bannockburn and um, Don't Kyle. Say you, were, you were Whitman? My kids went to Whitman. We moved away when I was in eighth grade. I went to high school in Texas, in college okay. in Texas. All my right. kids went to Whitman. All right, all right. Um, who was your favorite teacher growing up and why? God, uh, boy, that's a toughie. Um, well, you know what? I'd have to say my speech and debate teacher in high school, um, she really, put her effort into everything. She, you'll be the judge of it, but she taught me how to speak. Uh, <laughs> public speaking gave me a lot of confidence there. Um, it was also a group that was very diverse, the other students in speech and debate. And I got to know, an, uh, you know a lot of people from different backgrounds. It was a wonderful experience and she was a real leader. I mean, Great. she was a real mentor to me. Do you remember her name? Yes, I do. Um, Judy Qualls and then she, uh, later changed. She got married. Judy A. Lauren is her name. Right. Now. I just want to give her a shout out by name. Uh, what was your favorite TV show as a kid? Oh, gosh. Uh, depending on what qualifies as a kid. Um, I liked I, I love Get Smart. Okay. It's going to be lost on, you know, about two thirds of your audience because it's too dated. Um, all right. Some of us totally remember <laughs> Star Knight Trek, Knight. the first, the first generation, the very beginning. I loved it. Um, as oh. I got older, uh, Seinfeld has been one of my favorites. Okay. What was your earliest career aspiration or fantasy? I wanted to be a doctor initially. Okay. Uh, who was your mentor when you were young? My mentor, um, my parents, uh, and in particular, well, both my parents in different ways. My father was an NIH scientist. We, you know, we lived in Bethesda. He worked at NIH. He was a man of science. Uh, he was a skeptic about a lot of things appropriately when people would make uh, comments about, um, you know, when we see things in the headline like vitamin C cures cancer, 
Or, you know, go out, somebody would say, go outside, don't go outside in the cold without your coat on, you'll catch the flu or you'll catch a cold. Right. He would shake his head and say, there's no evidence for that. Right. And um, that had a, an important influence on me. My, I'm running on something called evidence-based policy. I hope to describe it a little bit later, uh, but he, he had a very important influence on me. His, um, on his tomb, on his gravestone, oh, I, I'm, I'm running ahead. off at the mouth. Go ahead. His All right, on his gravestone, it's written, uh, um, uh, he saw truth to science and reason. That was really what he was about. Man, I wish people took that to heart now. Um, we're going to pivot, John, to hobbies. What is your favorite sport to play or watch? Uh, baseball or softball, yeah, to play. Right. Uh, did you pick up any new hobby during COVID? Yes, I did. Um, so I uh, did a lot of biking uh, during COVID. I have a one speed cruiser bike that I got for $150. Awesome. I look fantastic on it. <laughs> um, and what I did was I, you know, I, I stayed off at like the Capitol Crescent Trail because they were too crowded, but I, the local streets. And I learned a lot about local history mm. uh, in Bethesda. You know, you know the uh, over the Clara Barton Parkway. There's the the Aqueduct Bridge, um, the La Stone Arch Bridge. Uh, I, there's a whole history in there in all those neighborhoods and everything that I I sort of I learned a lot about Civil War history and uh, industrial history. That's great. That I never knew existed. That's great. So other than this podcast, Kibitzing with Kagan, uh, what's a favorite podcast that you would recommend to someone? Well, I don't know about podcasts. I, I listen to, um, uh, well, this would obviously be my first choice. <laughs> and in fact, this episode, I would there just recommend to anybody. Goes without uh, saying. It goes without saying. The, um, but I listen to... Uh, I listen to a lot of tapes on Audible. They're not podcasts, but yeah. I listen. I I uh, become interested. I don't know, last eight years or so in, in American history. So I take survey courses on the American history and so on. I, Fantastic. Yeah. Okay. Is there a TV show that you've binged recently? Gosh, yes. Uh, my great joy in life these days is uh, after dinner and after uh, you know campaign and fundraising and all the other stuff is Jessica and I, you know, get into bed and uh, start watching television. And uh, gosh, what have we watched? Um, and then we probably, one of us or the other of us starts drifting off about 15 minutes later. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, let's see. Um, wow. Uh, I don't know. Shows we've watched recently. Um, uh, well, Downton Abbey, we, there you go. <laughs> uh, we were a little bit behind. Friday Night Lights is another one we've watched. There's one called Seaside Hotel. It's a, a, uh, that's just terrific. Um, okay. That's in uh, Dan it's Dan Denmark. Okay. Yeah. So let's move on. The next category is the arts. What is your favorite genre of music? Um, I like... Uh, <sighs> I like uh, Burt Bacharach music. Okay. So um, uh, my kids will probably be embarrassed when I say that, but you know, <laughs> Dionne Warwick and um, you know. Uh, there you go. I don't know. I, a, a lot, even um, the Carpenters. Love the there Carpenters. I love Karen Carpenter. As um, what, do you have a favorite song that you consider sort of an anthem, a song, a tune that lifts you up and inspires and motivates you? Gosh, um, not really. Uh, we can move on. Yeah, no, nothing, co nothing particular comes to mind. That's fine. Um, do you have a favorite arts venue to see a movie or I mean a a play or a concert place you really enjoy going? Um, well, we haven't done that in so long. Mm -hmm. I used to love going out to the just to the cinema. Uh, um, that was a great joy. I mean, it's different than doing, just doing it at home when you're, you know, I had an experience. Can I just talk for like 15 seconds here? Maybe, yeah, go, go, go. but I had an experience when I was younger, I watched uh, a Charlie Chaplin movie with my brother in a big theater in San Francisco. I was visiting him. I was probably, I don't know, 18 at the time or something. I, we saw modern times. Everybody was laughing uproariously. I thought it was the funniest thing I had ever seen in my entire life. 
I later showed it to some friends and I showed it to family on the videotape and, and it was um, not the it's same. It's just not the same thing yeah. as being in the theater. Yeah, yeah, true. Um, so I used to have a radio show on Broadway musicals. So I'm eager to hear what your up to five favorite Broadway musicals are. Broadway musicals, my goodness. Um, all right, Hamilton I saw recently. Okay. Um, you don't have to have five. If you no, just well, I'm gonna, this may take me like 30, 30 40 minutes, but I'm gonna come up, come up with five. <laughs> um, uh, I loved West Side Story. Um, uh, my Fair Lady. <laughs> Yay. The first, uh, you're the first candidate that has named one of my five. So that's a good one. All right. Okay. We can move on. Unless All right. You one more you want. You got another one? You're good. I'll probably remember it later and call you back. All right. Is there a book that has had a meaningful impact on your life? A book. Um, that's a toughie. Um, there are books that have moved me um, and that I remember. I guess when I was a kid, I loved science fiction. Mm -hmm. And uh, in terms of what shaped my life, uh, you know, I told you I like Star Trek, but um, uh, the Foundation Trilogy, uh, Isaac Asimov was one example. Okay, great. So the next section is your personal, our personal questions, not too personal, don't worry about it. Uh, what's the biggest risk you've ever taken in your life? Going on the show with you here. That's, <laughs> that, that's at the top. Um, <laughs> running for governor number two. There you go. Uh, let's see, the biggest risk. Um, you know, I, sometimes I think about, uh, I think about risk differently than, than uh, others and certainly than I did when I was younger. Okay. There are things you can do. I mean, you know, running for governor is, uh, it's risky in one sense. You can make a fool of yourself. It's easy to make a fool of yourself. Uh, there are times when I do make a fool of myself. You know, you say you're, and sometimes I do much better and, and I'm, I'm proud of myself. There you go. <laughs> Hopefully more of the former, but, uh, but really it's not a risk. When you think about it, um, things that are risky are, are uh, it, it's just a matter of, you know, uh, you know, potentially looking in a, to the public in a way that I don't want to look, but in the end, that's not the end of the world. Absolutely, that's true. Um, have you ever broken a bone and how? Um, I am a risk averse kind of person. So I, have, I'm, I don't, so I'm very careful about stuff. I did, however, break a bone uh, I, in my uh, pinky. I broke the top of my pinky at one point catching a tennis ball Ooh. with my bare hand. Okay. All right. What is your favorite technology, your favorite gadget that's not your telephone? My least favorite technology I'm going to tell you first, and that is Dum -dum -dum. Twitter. Um, I mean, I use it. There's some ways I like it, but the vitriol sometimes in social media, I really don't like it all. I, I prefer respectful communication. Okay. Um, things that I do like. Um, Zoom, I mean, uh, you know, the ability to do this, I think is very important at, you know, at my old, at my former job as at the uh, Philanthropic Foundation, uh, the ability to talk to people in the Houston office or the New York office without having to fly there, which you had to do in the old days is, yeah. uh, uh, is just a wonderful, wonderful occurrence. Agreed. Do you speak any language or languages other than English? I speak English, a little bit of French, and to the title of your podcast here, about 30 funny words of Yiddish. There you go. All right. Uh, what was the first car you ever owned, and how old were you? 1978 Pontiac Bonneville. It was a huge car, big blue car. Um, my parents let me take it to college and then to graduate school. Okay. Um, and uh, I learned how to parallel park on that. That's impressive. I'm very good at parallel parking. I could parallel park a Metro bus if I yep. had to. Uh, good for you. Uh, tell us about your first crush or your first love. Are you kidding me? Can we turn the turn the TV off? I mean, the thing <laughs> off here. You can take um, a pass. Uh, it can be a Hollywood crush or a real person. In elementary school, uh, it was uh, 
a girl named Susan Spearer, and I kissed her on my on, on the cheek on my third birthday party at my wow. third birthday party. Wow. All right, then. Do you know where she is now? No. OK. Um, is there uh, what ticks you off? Um, what ticks me off is uh, related to my answer about Twitter. Uh, Donald Trump, the lack of, um, and just and what's been opened up there, the lack of civil discourse. Yes. The idea of really trying to demean and and be nasty toward your uh, your opponents and uh, to minorities and to women and to immigrants. And all of that that's been opened up uh, by that kind of discourse, really, I, I, that is the opposite of what I believe in and what I've always been taught to believe in. Good for you. Um, tell us something important that you learned from one of your parents. Um, we talked about your dad. Is there something maybe you learned from your mom also? Yes, indeed. So my mom was a public school teacher. Both of my parents were devoted to public service and as and uh, they taught me that. My career has been uh, devoted to public service. Mm -hmm. She taught spe special education in, the, uh, in middle school, kids with learning disabilities. Nice. And um, when we were growing up, she had five kids. I don't, know, I don't know how my parents managed that part of it. But when we were growing up, she taught all five of us to read when we were in kindergarten. She would sit down half an hour with us every day. And... Um, so by the time we got to first grade, we all thought we were geniuses. We were ahead of the game. That's, That's one of the reasons I have proposed a uh, statewide tutoring for every high quality tutoring for every struggling first and second grader in the entire state of Maryland. Great. Because it's been shown to move them up to grade level early before their problems become serious in later grades. I want every child in Maryland to start as I did start elementary school, the beginning of elementary school to feel like I, they can succeed at this. That's because, great. yeah, if they get into third, fourth, fifth grade, they can't read, they can't do math, it becomes a much, much more serious problem. So that's what she taught me. All right, yay mom. All right, next category is at home. Tell us what your favorite junk food is. Gosh, I, I love Tootsie Pops. Okay, what flavor? Any flavor except chocolate. Okay, you can save those for me then. Uh, what is your least favorite food? Something that you just won't eat? Um, uh, I have trouble with, uh, God, something I just won't eat. You know what? I'm not crazy about French fries. I will do it sometimes. I'm the only person I've met who's not crazy about French fries or potato chips. Wow. Okay. Um, I don't like raw fish. That's okay. just, yeah. Okay. I do like pickled herring. Yep. That's in our DNA, right? <laughs> um, what do you cook especially well? Nothing. Oh, uh, I, my wife is a wonderful cook. My kids are wonderful cooks. I uh, don't have the patience for it. I make sandwiches for myself if there if there's no one around, or um, I, I really or put put something in the microwave. Okay. I do. Wait, 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 wait. I'm too harsh on myself. Way okay. too harsh. Chili. I make a. Uh, a uh, turkey chili that is that is excellent. Well, good and, for and you. Very simple. That's a thing. All right. It is. Um, what is your least favorite household chore? Um, I'm pretty good at household chores. Uh, I will vacuum. I will clean the bathrooms. I will clean the roof. Got gutters on the roof. Uh, um, uh, okay. Good. I'm not good at fixing stuff. I don't have great fine motor skills, and I don't have the patience for it. Okay. So if something breaks and has to be glued back together, that's not, not my thing. Okay. Um, God forbid your house is on fire. Other than people or pets, what is something you would really hope to rescue? Well, all of our photos, that, that would be number one, but those are all backed up uh, in the cloud. There you go. Um, God, what would I rescue? And all of my work files, you know, I take work very seriously. That's all backed up. Yep. Um, what else would I take? Um, uh, I, you know, I, there are a few things that I've collected over time. This is not, I'm sure I'm going to think of a better answer later, okay. but I have a little collection of things like a, um, it's a, and an historical, uh, from the French revolution, 
they had hyperinflation. And I have one of the notes. It's worth nothing, but it's a bill from 1792 from France uh, that I would take with me. Okay. So uh, we might want to speed things up a little bit, uh, but we're shifting. The next category is travel. What is the best vacation you've ever taken? Where did you go? Oh, oh, that's an easy one. Um, uh, my honeymoon, uh, our honeymoon, Jessica and I drove across country over three weeks. Right. Um, th that was great. Small towns, everything. We had a great time. Perfect. Um, what is a favorite place in Maryland that you've discovered maybe on the campaign trail? You know, I love, I love, I love where I live, Bethesda. I love Baltimore. Um, um, uh, yeah, I like, yeah, I like urban areas a lot. I, I don't know. I also like the shore. I, I, it's hard to say. I, mm -hmm. but I'm, I'm partial, I'm partial to the, I'm more of a, you know, city or suburb kind of person. I, I love Baltimore. And, uh, you know, actually, uh, Rockville and Gaithersburg. There you go. All right. <laughs> Bonus points for naming District 17 here. Um, do you have a favorite bar or restaurant in Maryland that you want to give a shout out to? I don't know if it's a bar or restaurant. I love Bethesda Bagels uh, on Bethesda Avenue in Bethesda. Um, we do all our, I've done all my catering there for, for years, you know, nice. at weddings, funerals, bar mitzvahs work, okay. et cetera. Great. Um, if neither COVID nor money were an object, where would you want to travel in the world? COVID nor money. Um, I don't know. Uh, that is a toughie. I've never been to the Far East and I, I would love to try that. Okay. That's a good one. Um, what is something you always bring with you when you travel? <laughs> Ah, <laughs> uh, God Almighty! What do I bring with me? Um, there's nothing in particular. I mean, I pack very light. Um, okay. Uh, yeah, I bring. Well, let me tell you, I bring uh, an ab roller, certain uh, exercise equipment. Okay, that's a good one. All right, we are shifting to social media. You've already talked about Twitter. Um, my question is, what percentage of your Facebook posts and tweets do you write personally? Um, it's, uh, it's hard to say. I edit all of them. Uh -huh. um, I write some of them, but mostly, it, but it's a mix. It's all, but it's all, my staff knows my voice and I always, sometimes I change it around. So it is more me writing. Uh, so it's a mix, but it's a collaborative effort. Okay. And which is your favorite social media platform? So I know you're not going to say Twitter, but is there one that you do like? I like LinkedIn, to be honest with you. Okay. I mean, that's a more positive, you know, people talk about their, it's, it's more of an at a boy kind of thing, you know, good or, or at a girl or whatever. Good um, uh, people uh, communicate respectfully there. Yeah, good. Uh, we are shifting now to the category of politics. So the first question is, why are you a Democrat? Because uh, I hold near and dear the, I've always been a Democrat from the time I voted when I was 14 for uh, Jimmy Carter. Now, how did I do that? I convinced my, I was not old enough. I convinced my brother in California who wasn't gonna vote to do it. Wow. Um, so uh, okay. I don't know if that's a felony and what the statute of limitations are. So <laughs> let's just not talk about that. <laughs> All right, so I, Persuasion. I think it's. I think it's kosher. Um, the. Um, uh, I've always because I believe in the values of the Democratic Party, including opportunity for all, expanding opportunity for all through an activist government, uh, not just for the privileged few, including racial and social equality. Uh, so the values. I think. I mean, I'm solidly on board there. Where I am different is this. I recognize that to achieve those goals, it's not enough to roll out yet another unproven plan or program, because however well-intentioned, many plans and programs just don't work. So to achieve those goals, we have to zero in on solutions that are tested in the real world and shown effective, like the tutoring example I gave you before. There's a lot of evidence that that really makes a difference. And there are many other examples like that. That's sort of the focus of my campaign. So on the values I'm up there, in terms of the means, we have to be very strategic and focus on things that are tested and proven. Okay, thank you, John. Um, 
Tell us a time when the Democratic Party or a Democratic candidate or office holder has disappointed you, something you've really disagreed with. Um, gosh. Uh, well, I, I will tell you something. Uh, I voted for Hillary Clinton and, um, and, I, and I liked her overall as a candidate. It bothered me that she and others do this too. She, uh, what when she was not a kid before she was a candidate, she she spoke at Goldman Sachs and took you know like six hundred thousand dollars for a speech. I just that that just uh, it it bothered me because okay. I mean obviously when Goldman Sachs calls on the telephone you know if she's in office again and asks for something she, they're going to get an audience with her and she's going to listen a little more carefully. I just don't that that bothered me. Okay. But I did like her. I liked her overall. It's a package. So I voted for her enthusiastically. We have a few minutes left and I still have a bunch of questions. Uh, when did you first think about running for office? Um, I've thought about it probably three or four years ago or, or even longer. Okay. Uh, on a scale of one to a hundred, with one being the very most right, right wing conservative and 100 being the most left, left wing liberal. What number would you say reflects your personal political ideology? Impossible to answer, Cheryl. Impossible. I'll tell you why, but I'll be very concise. The goals, I'm with the Democrats and some moderate Republicans. We all want to improve education, earnings, and so on. Um, it's the means, the, the, the focus, the pragmatic strategies that are actually going to get us there, that don't just sound like good ideas, don't just sound plausible, but have been shown to move the needle on education and so on. So it's there's a pragmatism to it uh, that doesn't really cut across Democrat or Republican, liberal or conservative. Okay. Uh, tell us a shero or hero of yours, living or dead. Well, okay. Um, Martin Luther King is one. Um, Abraham Lincoln, FDR, George Washington. Okay, um, I'm gonna give you a minute or up to a minute to make a pitch for a nonprofit organization that you support personally. Uh, thank you. Um, so there is a, one of the things I wanna do as governor is to expand proven effective job training to every young adult in Maryland who wants to advance. There are some job training programs that are extremely effective. One example, that we help to fund. Uh, it, it's a program originated in the Bronx. Uh, we uh, and my philanthropic team helped fund its expansion to Silver Spring. It's since expanded to Baltimore. It's called Perscolis, and it trains young adults, low-income young adults, for jobs in fast-growing industries like information technology. Well-paying jobs in fast-growing industries. Can you spell it in case somebody wants to look that up briefly? P-E-R is the first word, and then SCOLAS is S-C-H-O-L-A-S. Okay. And as governor, I would expand, there are a couple others like that, I would expand those so that every young adult in Maryland has access to truly effective job training that can move them into the middle class. Great. Um, if there were a windfall of federal funding to come into Maryland, and you were governor and the only decision maker as to where it would go, how would you spend it? I would take the uh, programs that have been tested and proven, and I would expand those. So it includes one-on-one -on -one tutoring, this kind of effective job training for in fast-growing industries that I just described. Yes. There are things like career academies and high-poverty schools. There are early childhood programs uh, like nurse home visitation for low-income families. I would just, um, there are teen pregnancy prevention programs that have been shown to cut the teen pregnancy rate in half. There are a set of programs and policies that are extremely effective. Uh, I, would, I would focus like a laser beam on expanding them. Okay, so I'm trying to be totally fair. Everyone gets 30 minutes. So I'm just gonna try, drive you because we are running out of time. <laughs> Black Lives Matter, what did you learn from it? What was it for you in just a few seconds? Uh, that opened, I, I learned a lot. And in particular, the George Floyd, uh, I think, the whole country became much more aware, including me, of things that the Black community has been aware of and living through for a very long time. I think that was an extremely important moment for our uh, country. Uh, and um, I, I just, 
it made me see things in a very different way. I should have seen them before, but like many Americans, this really brought it to the front. Okay. Uh, John Barron, the one of the, the one question that I ask every guest on my podcast, uh, what is your hidden secret superpower? What is something you're really good at that most folks can't do? <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm going to, I'll give I'll keep it short, but I'm going to mention two things if that's okay. One is when I was younger, I had a lot of social anxieties, like dating anxiety when I was a young adult. So I was always aware of, I was always thinking about, and it was very, it was disruptive. How was I coming across? I was always thinking about that. I grew out of that. I worked my way out of that, but it left me with a gift, which was I have a sense of how people are reacting to me. Not a perfect sense, but I'm very attuned to that. So when I give my message, I can tell if it's not going well, or I think can tell if it's resonating. We're going to have to leave it at that. Can I, no, no. One, one more sentence. No. I'm an expert on what works and what doesn't. I know the literature in education and many other areas, job training. I know the, the okay. studies. We funded a lot of them better than anyone. All right. Thank you, John. I'm afraid we're out of time, but I really enjoyed the opportunity to get to know you better. Thank you for being a guest on Kibitzing with Kagan. And I wish you, um, wish you good luck personally and professionally. I look forward to seeing you again in person soon. Thank you. I'll take that as an endorsement. Thank you. I really <laughs> appreciate it. <laughs> take care. Bye-bye.